There's been a lot of conversations going around whether Clash Mini is going to go global or not. So in this video, I'm going to be going over my global update wish list of features and things that I would like to see implemented into Clash Mini in order to push the game global. First thing that I think definitely needs to be addressed is Frenzy Mode. There are certain inconsistencies with Frenzy Mode, for example, like timers uh, going off before Frenzy Mode, and then once Frenzy Mode is implement, once Frenzy Mode starts, then those timers don't actually speed up. They they stay at their normal rate, which can cause for a lot of inconsistencies. I think another way to kind of mitigate this is just increasing regulation by five seconds. I think a lot of matches would get close to resolution or completely resolve themselves uh, with just an extra five seconds. So maybe an additional five seconds for regulation is needed to kind of not make frenzy mode feel as broken or as dominant as it is. And of course, if you have any suggestions that you don't hear me say in this video, definitely let me know down in the comments section below. All right, next up, I think it's gonna be this one's kind of hard because I want to figure out how to adjust elixir battle box rerolls and all that kind of stuff But honestly, it's kind of hard without seeing how pink fury is gonna be in the game, right? Because I can't talk about how to balance elixir Without seeing how powerful pink fury currently is because pink fury relies on how much elixir you have in your tank And you obviously don't want to be rewarding more elixir because that would just make pink fury powerful So now reworking the elixir system will also indirectly buff uh, a hero so we kind of need to see how Pink Fury flows within the flow of the, how Pink Fury feels within the flow of the game. And then we can kind of give our feedback then, but I feel like there's something that needs to be adjusted with Elixir and the battle box and the rerolls and everything like that. But I kind of want to see Pink Fury in the game first. I know like right now, outside of Pink Fury, it needs to be adjusted, but like with Pink Fury, does it? It's going to be really weird, but I, th I think this is something we're going to need to sit on for a little bit longer, but there will likely need to be some changes moving forward. Next up, this is an important one. There is some clarity on abilities that are super important. Right now, they did change a lot of the text where it like is super short um, and super digestible, but a lot of it is confusing. It doesn't really necessarily explain how things properly work. Like, for example... Um, it says on Grand Warden Shield, it's Grand Warden and nearest allies. It says three nearest allies, which implies that it's three allies outside of Grand Warden, but it's not actually three allies outside of Grand Warden. It's Grand Warden and then two allies. And then once you level that ability up, then it's three allies. And then also like AOE damage is not really clear of like what that is. Is it the plus? Is it the surrounding? Is it the... There's just some things that aren't fully clear. So I would like to see a lot more clarity on ability descriptions it's just for newer players to come in and understand and not just see aoe damage and be like what does that mean you know so just some clarification on that would be really nice okay i've been saying this one for so long and so have like a lot of people in the community a lot of other content creators we need more minis we just got two heroes in this last update we got grand warden pink fury and we got a dagger goblin there's currently 11 min 11 heroes in the game and only 29 minis that's not even a one hero to three mini ratio and a deck currently consists of five minis and people are asking for six or seven with the ability to play five but we definitely need more minis in the game and i want to see more abilities on minis i want to see silence on minis i want to see movement from left to right instead of just push back and pulling like fishermen i want to see units teleport and instead of dashing through and everything like that i want to see more area of effect damage and effects with clarity on what that implies whether it's a line whether it's straight up and down uh like a magic archer whether it's a group if it throws like a bomb and it hits nine tiles like i want to see more aoe effects and then also chain hits so we're thinking like world champion world champion is currently the only thing in the game that has like a chain effect where it has to hit units um, I'd like to see more chain type of effects. So I just want to see more different things, more unique aspects to minis and things like that. So we, yeah, we just need more minis. We just need more minis. Next up, I want to talk about the uh, deck slots or team slots, whatever it might be. We currently have five. I think maybe we need like 10 um, just because there's 11 heroes in the game. So it would be nice to have like kind of a slot for each hero. But also, um, we've kind of talked about this before, whether the game would feel balanced with six minis in a deck or seven minis in a deck or seven minis, but you can only play five. I think that adds for more strategy, more depth into the game, because then you have uh, min you have seven minis, but you can only play five. You have to kind of decide in the moment which ones you're going to play, things like that. I think that would be really cool um, to be implemented. So let me know what you think of that down in the comment section below. 
Next up is profile perks. This is things like top finishes, banners, uh, icons that you can put on your profile. Not, not necessarily just like the avatars, right? That you can change and flex, but you can have like, I finished uh, in season seven, I finished in the top 200 and season eight, I finished in the top 100 and things like that. Um, they currently kind of have that with like, how many days you've played, how many battles you've played, how many battles you've won, how many emotes you've unlocked things like that, whatever, or skins. Um, they kind of have that, but I would like to see it more flushed out and more in depth. And then also icons like official creators uh, and multiple that you can flex on a profile, right? Cause you have that in Brawl Stars, you have that in Clash Royale, you, where you have like multiple different things that you unlock from doing the game and that you can flex on your profile. I think that would be really cool to have implement. And it also kind of uh, pleases the, uh, the eye on the profile a little bit more. Next up, we have Masteries. This is going to be more long-term progression where maybe it's like Masteries unlock after you hit 3,000 trophies for the first time or Mastery progression continues after you hit 3,000 trophies and when the season resets, you have to hit 3,000 then you can continue on your Masteries. I don't know. Maybe that's a little too complex, too convoluted and everything like that or maybe Masteries just unlock after like you hit level 40 or something. I don't know. Um, but basically long-term progression where there's uh, exclusive cosmetics and things for mastering minis and heroes. So like if I win, if I complete every single mastery with the Electro Wizard, I should be able to have an exclusive Electro Wizard avatar, an exclusive Electro Wizard emote, an exclusive Electro Wizard skin, and different varieties like that where it's like different tiers and it's like if you complete everything, you get all three of those. If you complete a third of it, you get the avatar. If you complete the second third of it, you get the emote and things like that for different minis and heroes. That way it kind of incentivizes players to kind of play with everything and unlock those cool cosmetics for each kind of unit within the game. I think that would be super, super cool. Next up is puzzle mode slash expedition. So in the hamburger menu in the top right, you can click puzzles. They got released with two chapters of uh, beginner, intermediate, and nightmare, and haven't been touched since they've been introduced. Uh, and also they are just extremely unbalanced right now. Um, with the no movement system, they weren't changed to optimize the no movement, the uh, units on the back, but to me, that's not really like a priority for the team, I think. Um, but definitely for a global feature, it needs to be flushed out and kind of fixed or just completely locked until they fix that. Um, so either rework or just lock puzzle mode and then figure it out after, depending on what the priority is. I think it's pretty cool. I think it's pretty unique. So maybe just rework it. Next thing is raids and clans. Right now, clans are completely useless, completely inactive, and the team knows this, right? It, this, is not, this is not new information for the team, but for a global launch, this definitely needs to be addressed. So either raids need to be reworked or raids need to be removed and have clan wars introduced or something to that equal. I'm gonna leave a link to a video where I talked about clan wars in the description below. It's a really old video, but I still like that kind of system um, it probably needs to be changed now that Rumble is different, but I'll leave a link to it anyway, and just let me know what you think of it uh, in the comment section of that video. Next up is events, just more events in general. Right now we have currently three that are rotating. I'd like to see more events introduced, and I'd also like to see event passes be better. Um, and this would also mean making the event passes harder to complete, just by a little bit, not too much. Um, you can kind of complete it in like 10 battles. It's really nothing. Um, I would like to see events have a little bit more meaning behind them, but also put some exclusive emotes or avatars at the end of the free side of the event pass. Uh, and that way you can kind of recycle these, right? So if there's 10 new avatars and emotes that are exclusive behind events, um, put those on a weekly rotation because events are on a weekly rotation. And then if it comes back to an emote or an avatar that a player already has, then instead of getting that again, they would get 10 gems for it. So the conversion rate for the event exclusive emotes and avatars. So the only way to unlock these is through the event pass. You can't unlock them from boxes or any other means. It has to be through the event. Um, so make those specific duplicates convert to gems. And this would also potentially fix some of the free to play gem issues that a lot of players are wanting to see, which we'll talk about at, right after this. But um, basically it would also just put less stress uh, and strain on the art team for having to consistently come up with new things to implement for rewards, because then players will be satisfied with the duplicates turning into gems. 
Um, so that way, if it takes a little bit longer to get more event exclusive emotes or avatars, it's not gonna be that big of a deal because players who already have them will be getting gems instead to help them unlock other cosmetics. So this is kind of a nice balance there. And the next thing is free to play gems. Currently, there is absolutely no way to get free to play gems in the game. And I think that's a big problem. I think there should be a small limited selection of how players can get free to play gems and maybe buy gem, maybe switch the mini pass price to be able to be purchasable with gems. Uh, so that way, if people save up for three months, maybe they can buy that month's mini pass. Or if they want to save up for a cosmetic instead, then they can save their gems instead of buying the mini pass with gems, they buy that skin or emote or avatar, whatever it might be with the gems and things like that. So free to play gems, hopefully we see them for a global launch. I think that's gonna make players feel good about themselves as well. Next thing is removing Clash RNG. I talked about it in uh, my huge, um, huge problem video. Uh, I've already spoken to the team about it, so this is being worked on, but uh, I'm putting it in here because it's still, it's still in the game, right? Like it's, it's not removed from the game. I know it's being worked on, but we also don't know if that fix is going to actually fix the problem until we see the prop until we see it. So I'm just going to leave this in here as this little short piece, just remove clash RNG. Next up is going to be spectating slash a mini TV type situation where it's top 200 players get featured and uh, replays will be featured on the mini TV, but also if you have a friends list, which is also something that should be added in. Friends list, you can spectate your friends list. If you're in the same clan as somebody, you can spectate their match as it's happening, things like that. Uh, I think those kind of all kind of feed into each other and would be really cool to have for a global launch. Next up, this is a, a battle log from uh, Mosi on one of my YouTube comments. He said, uh, I'd like to see a battle log in game, and I completely agree. Having a battle log to go back through, watch your replays, watch and see what decks your opponent played, what minis they had, what heroes they had, all that stuff. A plus. I like it. And from Julian, he said, uh, a lot of people said this, but Julian was the first one that commented it, was uh, a use for gold. And I kind of added in, maybe just remove gold. Um, right now, gold, I think, is only useful for buying heroes. And if that's the case, what if we just removed gold and made heroes unlockable for hero shards? So then that way it's, you, you don't use gold for anything else. Why do we need gold then? Um, if it's just to unlock heroes, just make heroes unlockable via hero shards uh, and just remove gold from the economy or just give us a use for gold. Uh, haven't thought about it outside of that extent, but it's kind of one way or the other at this point. Give us something more for gold or just completely remove gold and switch unlocking heroes to hero shards instead. Uh, next up, ability to view decks on the leaderboard. So this was implemented before, but the issue was when a player switched to that deck, it automatically updated on their profile, which caused for issues in competitive play and people sniping on the ladder because if somebody changed their deck, they would just switch to a counter and then counter that person again. And it was an unfair competitive advantage. So I would say implement it to where decks are updated to a profile after the deck has been played in a public match, but not when the player adjusts their deck. So if a player plays a friendly battle or plays in raids or plays in some other offline, like not PVP feature, their deck should not be updated to whatever deck they're playing. If, it, if they play it in duel, then it should be updated on ladder uh, after that. So that way people can see which decks are being played on ladder. I think that would be uh, really good and really useful for other players uh, coming into a global launch, seeing what are the top players using. So next up, I want to talk about uh, the tiles. A lot of people like tiles. A lot of people don't like tiles. Some people like gizmos more. I personally like tiles over gizmos, but I would like to see chi tiles changed to items. Um, right now, the RNG with tiles is kind of rough for competitions. Um, and like the placement of tiles is just completely RNG. Like, yes, it's in the same place for both players but i think it would be cool to have uh tiles switch to items where players get to choose where the units that are getting the buff are so it's like if, if the tile spawns in, in the back right corner if i want to use something with my deck on that tile i have to play it in the back right hand corner but what if i wanted to play it in the second row or what if i wanted to place it in the middle of the back row um different things like that so let me know what you think of this. I'm not convinced one way or the other. I feel like I'd have to test it, but I feel like this adds more strategy where you're able to equip items onto minis and kind of place it where you want the unit to go, not necessarily where the game is forcing you to place it to get the buff. 
maybe that's too much. Maybe that's worse than what tiles currently are, but I, I feel like it kind of reduces some of the RNG. I don't know. Maybe I'm over... I, I mean, I don't think tiles are a huge issue, um, but I know some people in the community aren't a fan of it, and I feel like I could go either way. I think items are really cool, so I could see this working either way, but let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And up, this is just a short one, uh, just a reporting system in game if people are being toxic, what have you, just the ability to report someone, but hopefully that'll come with a global launch. Next up from Rinny Pine on Discord said 2v2 mode. Uh, a lot of people are saying 2v2, um, but I think how 2v2 could potentially work is have it be played on the bigger board and each player will have a draft mode where they uh, each draft a hero and then each draft three minis. This way it's two heroes and six minis and you play 2v2, you each get half the board and you fight it out and you play, you coordinate with your team. Where do you want to place a hero? Where do you want to place some minis? What minis should I draft? Things like that. Uh, I think that would make a fun 2v2 and this should be in event mode. Um, maybe to start and then maybe if it's really good have it be um put into a casual place that people can just play on ladder uh or just whenever they want outside of waiting for it to come in the event cycle and kind and to kind of coincide with that event mode friendly so you should be able to queue up uh for friendly battles in uh mini rooms or in clan friendly battles where you can choose to play one of the event modes if i want to play hero trio with uh my stream like if we want to queue up and I want to uh, open a mini room and we do hero trio events, I'd love to be able to run hero trio whenever I want uh, with friends, with clan mates and everything like that with viewers. So definitely, definitely want to see uh, event game modes put into mini rooms and friendly battles in clans. And this was a pretty uh, widespread feedback as well. First thought with Valorantic on, on our Discord, uh, said it's sandbox feature to practice interactions. So you could place down like, uh, a barb king on the enemy side and a barbarian and an archer and then you can practice what abilities hit that so you place it on their side then you place down what you want to try to counter it with you hit start game and then it'll simulate the round how it would be played out and things like that i think that'd be really cool i feel like it's a lot more complex so i i would say that this is a nice to have global feature i don't think this is particularly required for a global launch to be successful but i think this would be kind of like a nice to have thing um, for global launch to be successful. And also just kind of going back through the list, um, I want to highlight some things that would, so I'm going to just run through and there will also be chapters and everything like that. If you want to see everything, but for a nice to have feature, not necessarily required for global launch. In my opinion, these are nice to have features. This would be the deck extensions, uh, or deck slots, maybe extensions are required for global. I don't know. I'll leave that one 50, 50. Um, profile perks, that's a nice to have. Masteries, nice to have. Let's see, more events, nice to have. 2v2, nice to have. Changing tiles into items. I, I think those are really the only things that would be like a nice to have, but let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And that's gonna do it for my global wish list. Let me know if you agree with these, would change anything, add anything. Let me know down in the comment section below. Also, Abdut said he would like Sonic in the game, so I just figured I'd throw that in there. <laughs>